So before we get into this one, we do have to go over the September call-ups. So here's who we brought up. First was relief pitcher Justin Grimm. This guy throws some absolutely filthy heat, and I'm hoping that he'll be a key contributor to our bullpen. He was doing very good down in AAA, and I decided to give him an opportunity to see if he could potentially be a body that could last with us into the playoffs. And then the next man that we called up was Devin Williams. Williams, also another member of the AAA squad. Josh Lindblom in the MLB was struggling. Devin Williams is kind of another one of these guys who can be a long reliever for us, so I wanted to see if I could give him an opportunity. Plus, with the B potential and him only being 24 years old, only made it better. But now, let's go ahead and get into this one. So the 93 and 50 Milwaukee Brewers played host to the 88 and 56 Los Angeles Dodgers, both of the titans of the National League so far this season. On the bump for the Brewers was Brett Anderson, 17 and 5 with a 2.47 through 182 innings pitch so far this season. We're going to take top of the first 02 pitch, one man on for Corey Seager. Seager's going to ground that one over to the second baseman and they're going to go and turn a double play in that one and that would be how it would start off for the Brewers. Dustin May on the mound for the Dodgers, 1 and 0 with a 1 1.59 ERA. Only one start for him this season. Now bottom of the second, Jed Gaiorko at the plate, and Gaiorko gets that cutter, and he'll take it just over the left center field wall as Jed Gaiorko with his 11th homer of the season. Gaiorko puts the Brewers on the board, 1-0 to open up this one. And now back top of the fourth, full count, back to Corey Seager as Seager goes down, swinging to that slider. Top of the fifth now, 1-2 pitch, AJ Pollock at the dish, one out as he gets caught staring at that knuckle curve. I thought it was going to hang, but he just did not pull the trigger on it. Now, top of the six, Ruiz, the catcher at the plate, and Daniel Ruiz takes that one, just clobbers it to straightaway center field for his ninth ding-dong of the season. Daniel Ruiz, what a hit on that one. A, the leadoff home run, as then Dustin May will be up. Dustin May would ground out now for Justin Turner, the leadoff man, back up at the plate. The 1-0 pitch, one out as Justin Turner would get a home run of his own, so the Dodgers take the lead in this one. Turner's 15th home run of the season. He absolutely hammers left-handed pitching, and now then Anderson would walk. Max Muncy still in the top of the six is then Justin Grimm, who was called up for the September call-ups. He would come in and try to stop the bleeding. AJ Pollock at the plate, and Pollock gets stuffed on the two-seam fastball, as that'll get the Brewers out of the jam. And just watch Justin Grimm go to work here. There's Gavin Lux. Gavin Lux is down on the curveball. Now Daniel Ruiz. He had a home run earlier in this one. The one-two pitch this time gets him with some help from the ump. They get caught staring at the curveball. And then to complete the one-two-three inning, there's Daniel May. He'll ground out over the second baseman. Hira gets it into first. It's a 1-2-3 inning for Justin Grimm. Ediberry Ramos comes in now for the Dodgers in the bottom of the seventh as one man on. Alvisal Garcia gets plunked by that one. So now two men on, two men out for Christian Yelich, the man, the myth, the legend. As that slider would hang, it would get off of Gl Lux's glove as Yelich would arrive into first safely. A hard hit ball. Bases loaded now. Keston Hira at the plate as he'll take that one over the glove of Turner as it takes a bad hop on him. And now the Brewers have tied this one up. Omar Narvaez at the plate now. Narvaez takes that one, and though hit well, it can't get past the left fielder, so that'll be it for the inning. Reyes Moran to the former Giant comes in now for the Milwaukee Brewers as the first batter he's going to face is Justin Turner, and Turner takes that one into the left field wall. He hammers that one for his second home run of the day, his 16th of the year, as he gives the Dodgers the lead in this one. And now Reyes Maranta goes back to work, gets one out, and then gets Mookie Betts, the former Red Sox, swinging at that one as Kelly Jensen now comes in to try to keep the Dodgers' lead intact. Brock Holt would come in and pinch it for Orlando Arcia as Brock Holt does his job. He takes that cutter into right field as he'll get on with one man out to open up the inning. Justin Smoke up now. Smoke was the MVP of the Reds game in the last episode, and he does it again. Smoke takes that fastball. It doesn't get over the wall. However, it'll get them on second second and third with only one out. Now Lorenzo Kane, two outs. Kane takes that cutter back up the middle, a base hit. They're going to try to send Justin Smoke home. However, Smoke, though he hits really well, he does not run super well as he'll get caught, tagged out, and the uh, game stays tied. Alex Claudio brought on now in the top of the ninth. He's been the best reliever out of the pen so far, so I thought it would be the best idea to give Claudio the opportunity to try to keep the Dodgers held at bay. However, Mac Muncy 
says, nah, that, that, that's just not what's going to happen here. So Max Muncy with his 28th home run of the season. He continues his impressive season as then AJ Pollock would be up next to bat and then AJ Pollock takes the 1-1 pitch. He'll hit it. Garcia gives chase, but he can't get there as it goes over the left field wall. Pollock's 13th home run of the season. Only seven pitches in for Alex Claudio. Now the Dodgers have a two-run lead in the top of the ninth. However, in the bottom of the ninth, Mike Flora would come in now. He would have to face the Brewers' heart of their order. So the first man he would see is obviously Garcia. Garcia takes the no the first pitch from Floro. He'll bloop that one into left field. It'll get down. It'll get him on to open up the inning. Christian Yelich, the next man up. Yelich gets that pitch right where he wants it, and Yelich gets a line drive into right field, and it just gets over the wall. So the former NL MVP comes in clutch to save the Brewers with his 44th dinger of the season on the second pitch of the game from Mike Floro. They tie this one back up. Josh Hader now in in the top of the 10th. His job is is to just get one man out, and that man is Mookie Betts. Betts, the 0-2 pitch as he goes down swinging. This game stays tied. We go to the bottom of the 10th now as Blake Trinan comes in for the Dodgers. He'll try to keep the Brewer crew held at bay. Brock Holt starts it off, however, as he'll take that one into right field. It bounces all the way to the wall as Holt will get in with an easy no-out leadoff double in this one. Justin Smoke now at the plate, and Smoke takes that one deep left field as it gets down and goes into the corner. Brock Holt turns the corner, gets home, and the Brewers walk this one off. Justin Smoke probably would have been gunned down over at second, but it does not matter. The Brewers get the win over the Dodgers in this one, and they'll move to 94 and 50 on the season. Josh Hader credited with the win despite only facing Mookie Betts in this one, and Blake Trinan with the loss. Christian Yelich went two for five with a home run and two RBIs. He'll be given the player of the game. Jed Gallorca went one for four with a home run early in this one and Brock Holt two for two with a double he came around and scored twice and Justin Smoke two for five with a double and an RBI. Other than that that's it for this episode the next episode is going to be the regular season recap and the playoff preview but anyways thank you all for watching and I'll see y'all in the next one.